Poundland has just released a range of um, smart Wi-Fi enabled products. Um, here is a, a smart Wi-Fi adapter, a socket adapter. So you can plug your devices in here and control it from your phone or from Alexa or Google Home, your Echo Dot. Um, and yeah, it works quite it works well. I'm quite impressed. Um, here's um, a smart bulb from from them. Uh, it works quite well as well. It's, it goes by the brand Ultra Bright. I've never heard of it before. Um, there's quite a few products from Poundland called Ultra Bright. Um, so um, what we can do is we can crack it open and see what's inside, to see what makes it tick. So let's see. Hopefully this this should pop off quite easy. Giving it a bit of oh, yeah. That wasn't too bad actually. It should actually be a bit harder to pop off. Right, let's take a look inside. Right. So this bulb has the ability to be either cold or warm white or various adjustments in between. And just by looking at these LEDs, the phosphor dye on on the front of the LED chips, some of them are sort of light yellow colored and other, others are more orangey. So I would say these are the sort of more uh, ready tone color, uh, warm white LEDs, and these are the cooler white ones. And you can sort of mix the color between these LEDs by varying the brightness. Uh, this looks like one of these chips that vary the, um, the current and sort of rise the sine wave up and down like Big Clive has done reviews about some of Poundland's bulbs that have one of those chips. It looks like one of them, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, what we'll do is we'll take some of this silicon stuff here and we'll see if we can remove it so that uh, we can pop that circuit board out. It's got this um, aluminium circuit board that's insulated and it, it takes, uh, this stuff is like a conductive heat silicon. So the heat from the LEDs are dissipated to the aluminium sort of plastic covered aluminium coating on the side. So we'll remove some of the stuff. And hopefully it should just pop out really nicely. I think that should be able to come out now. Looks like it's coming out. Looks like it just plugs in there. And these pins here. Yeah. Oh, it's unplugging. There we go. The LED module is out. Quite a nice little module actually. Nicely designed. And then um, here we have the little, what looks like the little Wi-Fi receiver module. That is tiny. One of those ESP32 type things. I'll have to have a look. I'm not entirely sure there's the antenna for it by the looks of it. Um, I don't know if this will come out on one piece. Looks like it's soldered on there, so maybe we should take the solder off from there. We can either suck it with a solder sucker or we could try and bang it off. I think banging it off is, is going to be easier. There we go. Most of it off. Very sophisticated technique, as you can see. Oh, that's it. It's out. What have we got here? Right, so the 240 volt, 230 volt AC comes in, passes through what looks like a a bridge rectifier, and then uh, looks like a sort of a power supply. Yes, it's it's a type of a switch mode pass by maybe a a buck converter. Yeah, so it's not insulated. There's no transformer. So it comes in, looks like it goes through a bit of filtering, which is an inductor there. Then to this main um, filter capacitor, actually it's it's a reservoir capacitor, so the, the DC is, uh, the AC comes in, 
gets converted into DC and is moved by this capacitor, which will give you about 300 and 320 volt DC. And then goes through a zero volt link, so it jumps across to there. And here we have, we actually have some information. We have ground, voltage plus, it's interesting. Okay, so this is probably just a, a little power supply, like a, a five volt power supply. I'm not entirely sure what the voltage is. Um, this is ground, antenna, SDA, don't know what that means, CLK is probably clock. Okay, so all of these components here is the power supply. Um, and this is our little Wi-Fi module, which is tiny. It's underneath this little sticker. I ended up desoldering the Wi-Fi module and tacking some wires to it. And um, later on, I'll put a 3.3 volt supply and um, connect uh, the PWM outputs to a MOSFET to drive some LED tape. There are only four wires to connect. It's ground plus 3.3 volt and two PWM outputs. So just a quick and dirty. There's our little uh, Wi-Fi module that came out of the smart bulb from Poundland. Um, uh, crudely connected 3.3 uh, volt regulator to grossly over overkill MOSFETs but it uh, means I can drive as much LED tape on it as I want to um, so it can be fed from 5 to 12 24 volts whatever type of LED tape you want because the regulator regulates the 3.3 volt supply um, and uh, I'll put it into this little enclosure um, that uh, was repurposed from something else And then we have a LED strip tape driver with two output channels. And so the 12 volt is converted to 3.3 volt. And then uh, that supplies the power to the module. And um, it drives the MOSFETs drive the LED tape. So here's an example of how it might work. Uh, and it, you know, it's convenient. It has two channels. So that's the warm channel. And that's the cold channel or a mix in between the two. So you can drive two bits of LED tape with it, any color you choose. And then um, you can uh, change the overall brightness as well. So um, the little module can be removed from the bulb and repurposed for um, a different use. Um, and um, it's then, if you take the, the original dimming inputs on the LED board and just put them straight to the supply of 3.3 volt, it just becomes a standard LED bulb. So you don't waste the bulb and you can use the LED module for something else. Um, this doesn't have to be 12 volt. Um, you could uh, run 5 volt LED tape straight from a USB um, phone charger. That would work as well. So let's get back to the LED driver board and the rest of the LED bulb. So this is the little chip on the um, on the LED driver board. And it's quite interesting. It seems to have um, two output channels that uh, drive two different sets of LEDs and they can be dimmed individually. That's the other output there. Um, and um, then the dimming is, seems to be controlled by this pin here and that pin there. And the control signal is a simple pulse width modulated signal, a PWM signal. And you just have the live and neutral coming in. It's rectified, fed straight into this uh, reservoir capacitor here. So it's filtered around 330 volts DC. 
Um, and uh, this looks to be, I don't know, uh, probably some sort of current sensing resistor. This resistor probably sets the output current for the particular type of LEDs used. And then, um, yeah, so on our on our little LED board we've got, we, the one set is the cold white and the other set's the warm white and it just varies the brightness between the two of them. You can actually take the Wi-Fi module out and just put the full supply voltage of 3.3 volts directly onto the dimming inputs. Um, then it just becomes a normal LED light bulb. And then the um, Wi-Fi model can be repurposed. Like in my case, I want to drive some LED tape with it. Um, but what you have here, here is our little Wi-Fi ESP board. That's on, on the main power supply board, the green PCB. Uh, that feeds into this channel and that channel. And it, so this chip is actually split in two. Um, it, it drives two separate outputs. Uh, I would like my lamp fitting in my lounge to be able to have a smart bulb in it, but it has three different bulbs in it. Because how do I control three bulbs as they want, as if they want smart um, bulb? And what I'm thinking is from looking at this application uh, on the datasheet application, they have multiples of these chips. Um, and it's interesting because they're all parallel. The, 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 the dimming lines are parallel together. So what we could do is we could buy more than one of these bulbs. Um, like my lamp fitting takes three of them. And what we do is we we just have the one ESP from one of the bulbs, the two data lines or the two dimming lines, drive all the other bulbs data uh, dimming pins. <clears throat> so in theory it should be possible to somehow modify it so that one bulb is the master and the other two so one bulb is left intact but we just have to get these bring these these two dimming wires out and bridge them across to the other bulbs inside to this uh, to these chips here so that you could do multiple bulbs from one um, ESP controller we could parallel the outputs of this uh, module, the dimming outputs. Just bring them out from one lamp and then bring them to the other lamps. The application note shows something so that these um, these chips can be paralleled so that all the, all the other lamps... So if the lamp fitting has three or four bulbs in the same fitting, they could all work in unison with the dimming and the color changing. Something to think about. Anyway, let's put it back together. Let's see if it goes back together nicely. So, all in all, interesting lamp for just seven pounds. I'm, I'm quite impressed. I think we'll feed it a bit of heating compound. Right, it's working. Now the flickering you see on the camera is obviously the dimming effect. Right, let's test it. Let's see if we can adjust the dimming. Switch the dining room bulb to 100%. Got it. Setting the dining room brightness to 100%. Set the dining room light to warm white. Sure, changing the dining room to warm white. Well, the camera doesn't really reflect it, but it's a, it's a much warmer tone. Turn off the dining room light. Sure, turning the dining room off. Very good. So that was Poundland's um, seven pound smart bulb. I think that's pretty good, good value for money really.